Hello and welcome to Give and Take, the positives in life. And today's topic is Lifetime Performer. And we have a wonderful guest that we go way, way back. No, not way, way back, just way back. <laughs> and he will introduce himself, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Drew Mishu, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Drew Covington. That's okay. what they call me on stage. Okay. Guitarist, uh, produced. Uh, I'm playing for um, two bands right now. Okay. Uh, one is called Keep the Change, and mm -hmm. one is the Final Decision Band. Mm -hmm. uh, one is out of White Plains, one's out of Mount Vernon. Okay. Um, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Lovely. <laughs> so let's start from the very beginning sure. in, in regards to how you got into the uh, music um, industry or music uh, performer or lifetime performer, whatever it is that we want to say. You know, I, I actually, I had a cousin who played guitar mm -hmm. and I was a kid and I really didn't know how good he was. Okay. But one day I seen him on stage and I was like, oh, he must be real good because he's playing on stage and people like it, right. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had acoustic guitar, you know, he was uh, Southern and he played a lot of blues, mm -hmm. you know? And we used to, me and his son, my cousin Marvin, we would uh, be playing in the house and he'd be like, I'm gonna get my dad's guitar. And he'd get the guitar and we'd just strum on it, mm -hmm. you know? I wasn't really, I didn't really like the guitar okay. at first, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. Because I liked the drums. Right. So uh, I learned how to play drums, and my parents was like, boy, he's going to beat us to death. <laughs> so they bought a guitar. Okay. Right. And I ended up uh, being taught how to play by a friend of mine, mm -hmm. older brother, you know, and I fell in love with it then. Wow. And it's funny how these things come like one minute you know you're sort of interested or not interested and then it just comes circle it's like you know what I think I'm ready for this now you know I, I it was something I, I think the guitar was really the instrument that I was supposed to play anyway <laughs> okay. because I mean I just took to it the first lesson he gave me right six mm -hmm. months later mm -hmm. I was like already trying to play in a band mm -hmm. you know Very so good. and that was you know I mean it was it just it just grab hold of me like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I would come home from school every day. I wouldn't even go outside. <laughs> wow. I would just go in the house and bang on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So my pa my mom used to say, you come home and you bang on that guitar. <laughs> right. But, you know, I mean, it paid off. Mm -hmm. It paid off. I, mm -hmm. I think it paid off because I enjoy playing the guitar. I enjoy music. I enjoy the thing that I like about music. I enjoy making people feel good, making mm. people happy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, I mean, when we were kids, you know, everybody wants to, oh, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be, you know, you know, music, it's deeper than that. Yeah. I mean, but you realize that once you, once you, you know, get to a certain proficiency, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get to a certain level, sure. you know, you, you start to realize that and it's fun. Mm -hmm. I always approach it as being fun. I don't right. care, uh, you know, how hectic uh, other people might you know, mm -hmm. try to make it. Sure. I'm always trying to make it fun and relaxing. Mm -hmm. Very know. good. I've always liked music, all kinds of uh, genre, and, you know, just uh, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it sounds good to the ears. I, I just like it. I've always just had a, a love for music, not actually performing or anything like that. I never had the voice. I sort of developed a voice later on in adult life. Yeah. It is what it is. I'm not going to say I'm this perfect singer or anything like that, <laughs> but it sounds a lot better than it did all those many years ago. <laughs> so these things just emerge, you know, just out of nowhere sometimes. Well, I mean, we all we all <coughs> we all have music in our hearts. We do, you know. Yeah. <coughs> Some of us uh, go, f you know, we become singers, mm -hmm. musicians, right? You know, and some of us just become singers in the shower, right? You know. <laughs> But that's all right. But it's still music. It's still, sure. you know, a song. It still sure. makes you feel good, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I mean, look at it. You know, if a, if a mother is humming, you know, she's in the kitchen or she's, you know, uh, doing something and she, she's happy because her child is, you know, she's humming. Mm -hmm. She's feeling good. Right. And when you feel good, the first thing you do is you hum. That's you know, right. you got a song in your heart. You got mm -hmm. a song on your mind or something right. like you, you, Ella, you know Ella, mm -hmm. our little granddaughter, right? Sure. When she was born, right, 
when she was born, mm -hmm. me and Ivy went down to Maryland. Right. And I picked this little child up mm -hmm. as a newborn, only a, a few hours old. Mm -hmm. And I put my, and she was actually humming a song. And right. I was like, guys, listen, she's humming. <laughs> and everybody heard her humming. Right. She still hums the same song. She's 11. Uh -huh. Well, she'll be 11. Okay. And it's, it's strange, mm. you know, but it's spiritual. There you go. You and know? I'm glad you said the spiritual. So did you do any kind of singing in church or was there any kind of um, foundational piece to your, your uh, musical talents? You know, uh, I found that in my f family lineage mm -hmm. <coughs> that we were blessed because we have a, a bunch of preachers. Mm, okay. We have musicians, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we have a cousin that was president of a HBC, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and he used to have an audience with Duke Ellington, mm. you know, all of the jazz greats because he was wow. president of a, a, a historical black college, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and he knew those guys, mm -hmm. you know. Now, was I around those guys? Probably when I was a kid, okay. like a baby, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but I, 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 it was just, it was in me. Mm. I guess it was in me. It was inside of It you was, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, uh, came up in the uh, late 60s, mm -hmm. 70s, okay. you know, so I went through that whole genre, mm -hmm. you know. Um, started recording like in 76, mm. you know. Uh, no, we're going way back. <laughs> going way back. <laughs> I actually um, not really did my, like my first record that was actually uh, played mm -hmm. uh, on the radio was 83. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I had worked with um, Grandmaster Flash, mm -hmm. um, Eddie Fletcher, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Duke Booty, wrote uh, the message in okay. New York, New York for them. You know, we did the pre-production at his house. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kids. We were like 20, you know. And uh, he took that, took it to Sugar Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they shipped that record gold. That was the message. You know, they redid it, of course. We right. just pre we just did the pre-production, pre mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they did the record. The record went gold. Everybody knows the message, you right. know. And then uh, he produced us. Mm. Uh, and so we had a song out called um, Wave Craze. Okay. And we also did uh, a song with Dr. John. Mm -hmm. uh, with Eddie Fletcher also wrote that one. It was called okay. Jet Set. That was in the 80s, mm -hmm. you know. And then, uh, you know, we did little little stuff. Mm -hmm. The record was, I mean, you know, we got medium heavy rotation. Okay. That's pretty good, uh, uh, you know, as far as uh, records, uh, airplay. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the three major la uh, major radio stations, mm -hmm. BLS, KISS, and whoever was uh, <laughs> at the time. Okay. They, uh, they all played the record. We mm -hmm. had, it was number 22. Okay. You know, it played uh, on the charts for a good, uh, I think it was between uh, 16 and 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. Not bad. No. You know, it charted over in England. Okay. Not bad. Mm -hmm. You know. Very and good. then I worked with um, uh, Glenn Goings of Paul and Funkadelic. Mm -hmm. I worked with his nephews. Mm. They had a group called Family. They were on EMI Records. Okay. I was their MD. Uh -huh. You know, and um, I worked with Eddie Hazel from Paul and Funkadelic. And, you know, just a. Bunch of, bunch of people. Nice, nice. You it know? sounds, you know. So um, you were involved in church growing up. Are you still involved with some kind of religious or spiritual practice of any sort? I mean, uh, other than going to church every, every now and then, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, uh, I, I used to play for churches okay. in Jersey because mm -hmm. I'm from Jersey, originally from Jersey, from oh. Plainfield, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm still... Uh, active, mm -hmm. you know, not as much because, you know, uh, I'm really busy in the secular world as right. far as music, mm -hmm. you know. I, I don't really, um, I, I don't um, make a difference between secular and, and gospel, okay. you know, because the, the lines are blurred, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, 
secular music and gospel music use the same elements, okay. you know, as far as the music, as far as the, mu okay. you know, music, mm -hmm. now, as far as lyrical, you know, that's, uh, right. that's where, that's Divides, where it's right, right mm -hmm. which is a good thing, right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I like spiritual music, I, you know, a spiritual music doesn't necessarily mean it's gospel, you know, earth, wind, and fire, keep your head to the sky, mm -hmm. that was spiritual, right. it wasn't gospel. And also, there's a lot of reggae music, it's very spiritual. Things. Very spiritual. Lyric lyrics? Very spiritual. Very spiritual. Right. And right. Bob Marley, some of his songs spiritual, were extremely very deep. But not spiritual. gospel. Exactly. But it was spiritual. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I loved uh, Bob Marley. He, mm -hmm. was, he was among one of my musical heroes. Mm -hmm. I mean. I actually saw him in concert. Did you? I was in England, yes. I saw him, yeah. That would have been... I probably would have died in heaven at that point. <laughs> I saw him, yeah. But I did. I did that with Chaka Khan. Uh -huh. I got to tell you, right. I went to see Chaka Khan. Ch uh, the the year James Brown died, mm -hmm. we actually had tickets for BB King's right. to see James Brown. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. he died on mm -hmm. Christmas. Look at morning, that, yeah. right? So Chaka Khan, she, you know, she stepped in and took it over. And I had never seen Chaka Khan. Mm, okay. You know? So now, I just want to, so that we don't um, mm -hmm. forget, I want to talk about you're having um, an event that's coming up this weekend in Mount Vernon. Yep. So we, I guess we can see that flyer now. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, uh, we're we going to be doing the Summer Breeze Festival, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the final decision band. Okay. Right? Uh, featuring Eve mm -hmm. Soto. Mm -hmm. uh, that that one is the week, uh, week after next. Uh, Keep the Change, that's the other band I'm in. Okay. <laughs> I'm in two bands. Okay. Keep the Change, we're going to be at uh, Boteo, Brazil, mm -hmm. and that's in um, Harlem. Okay. Um, uh, I, I can't remember the, the address, mm -hmm. but it's in Harlem. It's a beautiful little, quaint little place. I mean, mm -hmm. we found this place, <laughs> and it's beautiful. Oh. I mean, and it's so nice. It's, it's like I said, it's quaint. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it'll probably hold maybe 65 people in it. Okay. Right? But that's all you need. <laughs> 65 <laughs> people. We're going to go in there. We're going to mm. rock the house. Nice. Very nice. You know? Yeah. Um, but next Saturday, okay, <clears throat> Saturday good. coming up, mm -hmm. is Final Decision Band. Okay. Uh, we're going to have uh, featured artist is Eve Soto. Mm -hmm. And we have a Temptations uh, review featuring uh, Danny and Mike. Okay. You know, uh, and the Final Decision Band. Uh, Miss Veronica, mm -hmm. she's going to be featuring, uh, featured in the song. It's okay. going to be a great, great day. Lovely. Great concert. Excellent. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Mm. I can't wait. <laughs> nice. Isn't it wonderful to do something that you really have a passion for? You know, I mean, and it's so much fun, and mm -hmm. it's so relaxing and so nice. You know, when I was, when, when I was, I think I was in the fifth grade, and it was like right before I really learned how to play an instrument like right before, mm -hmm. you know, and a, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, we had an assembly <laughs> at school, right? And so my friend, he said, "Hey, let's get up on the stage," you know, and I was like, "Okay, let's get up on stage." And so we got up on the stage and we walked across the stage and I looked out and I saw everybody in the audience. <laughs> and I felt like that was home. And I was wow, in the fifth grade. And I was like, mm. I should have been like afraid or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, but I wasn't afraid. Right, right. I right, wasn't right. afraid. Yeah, yeah. And then I, the seventh grade, mm -hmm. I was playing, I, I was, I guess, getting kind of good, right? <laughs> My brother played in the band. He played saxophone. His mm -hmm. guitar player couldn't do a talent show. Mm -hmm. The talent show was at my junior high school. Nobody at the, my school knew I even played the guitar. Mm -hmm. And my brother came in the room. He busted in the room. He said, you're going to play guitar. You better know all of our songs because if you don't, my brother was sort of a bully, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you don't, when you get home, oh, you dear. know what's going to happen. Oh, dear. And I was like, oh, I knew every one of their songs. Mm. And I got up on stage, and right. I played, and it was like, 
I mean, I had never played in front of anybody before, mm -hmm. and it was like I did it every day. Mm -hmm. I just got up there, I plugged up, and I was just playing. Right, I, right. I had no feeling, yeah. no no fear, mm -hmm. you know, That's nothing great. like that. I remember having an experience like that in England. They had this, uh, it was in the park, um, and they were had that you could go off and sing, and I actually, I was, I don't know how old I was, I was in my, uh, probably in the single numbers, eight, <laughs> nine, something. And um, I just got up there and I sang. Yeah. We're all going on a summer holiday. I remember it like it was yesterday, Cliff Richard. <laughs> and I got up there and I sang and I had no fear and I was just confident and I sang that song. It mm. just, you know, just sometimes these things just, you know, you just get that confidence to go ahead and do what needs to be but done. But I think that's something that you... It's that, inside. Yeah, it's, it's inherited. Inside. Yes, it's you inside. You know, you have a strength. You right. you're, you're, you come from a lineage of strength, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I and certainly come from that. What, you know, <laughs> listen. I know it, it's very short lineage because my mother is a lot of strength. <laughs> anyway, I wanted... Um, you gave me a wonderful surprise <laughs> and you showed me this picture that I have never seen <laughs> And it was a picture of us. It was actually um, you. You, you it, share with us that there it was. Is. It was. It was. It was years ago. Right. When I had hair, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's Joe Frazier in the middle of us right. because I'm friends with Larry Holmes. Right. Larry Holmes is a great friend of mine, mm -hmm. and that was at Larry Holmes' house. Right. And um, I was saying how radiant I look. Right, I'm because like remember, with a big smile, I'm just you know, like glowing. <laughs> because you were so relaxed, because we got and out you of. You did mention what you mentioned. <laughs> no, no, we had got out of town. Uh -huh. We really needed the break. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and we got out of town, right. and you know, it was a it was a gig. You yes, know, yes, it was uh, really a lovely it, day. It was. I was saying I had. So it, just the drive there, it was. the drive back, yeah. just being in that whole yeah. environment. Nice and calm. It was. Yeah, Pennsylvania. It was very nice. Yes, yeah. yes, And yes. Larry's a very, very, yeah. you know, he's a very, very nice, gracious man. Very much so. I mean, smart, yes. funny. And I was saying, oh, my goodness, my dad, if my dad, my dad would have loved to have met Joe Frazier. Oh, uh, I mean, and, that, like, and you know, that was a few years before he died. Yes, okay, you know? right, right. And right. you remember now... He came in with a cane, right? Mm. And everybody's like, oh, Joe, because he came in, mm -hmm. you know. See, he's a funny dude, too, right? <laughs> and then he walked over, because mm -hmm. Larry walked over, mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, I, I didn't know if he was coming. Mm -hmm. But he told the band, he told us he was coming. Mm -hmm. So he, <laughs> Joe Frazier was like, he said, hey, Larry, tell the band to do, uh, uh, what was the song, uh, uh, what was the blue song he? Oh, um, uh, uh, what's the song he likes? Uh, it's a blues. Um, I was just playing it today. It's okay. Okay. It's a blues you. song, mm -hmm. right? So he came over to uh, us and Larry said, "Listen, Joe wants to do. He wants to do the song, right?" So we were like, "Okay, but you, you sure he's up to it? Because he's got the king, right?" <laughs> <laughs> He kicked that cane to the side. <laughs> he didn't start it. You saw him. He got out there and he started singing oh that song. Goodness. And we were like, uh, you know, and then when he got finished, right, mm -hmm. his uh, somebody that was with him picked the cane up and gave it to him and he just <laughs> hobbled back over to the table like it was not, it's like it's so nice. It, okay. But he's a, he was a he was a yeah. very and they nice was, guy. they were so humble. There was none yeah. of these airs and graces. No, and no, they're just, just being a part of the group and just it was very nice. Very, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times people think you know because they've had such success thank you, and thank you. so much money thank and you. you know they're tainted. Mm -hmm, Some people mm -hmm. are like that. Yeah, I've come across that where you know? you you know you just want to say hi. You know, yeah. not that you're this big fan and 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 so, some people have been very rude and said you know like please. You know, I got to tell you, most of the people that I've mm -hmm. met uh, through Larry, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of sports people, you know, um, entertainers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Larry, Larry brings about a certain uh, a certain feeling when you go to his club mm -hmm. or his house. Right. You know, it's a very inviting. 
place to be. Yeah, because we did both. We went to the house and, and the, the club. And yeah. the club. Mm -hmm. You know, and I used to go to the club when we played there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually I'd be the first one there because I lived the furthest. So right. I'd leave early and mm -hmm. beat everybody, right? Right. And Larry be at the bar and Drew. They didn't lock you up yet? He's <laughs> just, Larry's funny, he, mm. he, you know. Knowing that, I don't, I've never had a problem with the law. <laughs> but, you know, it's an interesting thing because the, the years that I've known Larry, right, one of Larry's best friends, right, mm -hmm. was my brother's brother-in-law. Oh and I goodness. didn't know it for a long time. And one day These we were happen. talking, mm -hmm. right, and... And he introduced me to the guy. Mm -hmm. So the guy was looking at me. He said, yo, you know, you look real familiar. Mm. Are you, where are you from? I said, well, I live in New York, but I'm originally, I'm originally from Jersey. Mm -hmm. He says, Jersey. Oh, okay, because I got a, a brother-in-law. I mean, you and him can almost be brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, really? Where's your brother-in-law live? He uh -huh. said, well, he lives in Jersey. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he lives in Plainfield. I was like, really? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> I, said, I said, I grew up in Plainfield. <laughs> What's his name? Right, right, right. He said, right. Gary, miss you. I was like, that's, that's my so funny. brother. Oh, my goodness. You mean yeah. Joyce is your sister? <laughs> you know, and that, it was crazy. And these things happened because I'm thinking back one of my um, recent guests. Um, it turns out me and her, her aunt would, and now I'm hearing her voice, I'm hearing her aunt's voice is similar. You see what I'm saying? That's all coming to me. You know, the world got yes, real small. I'm telling you. <laughs> real That's why you got to do the right thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I always, I always strive to do the right thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I always... And I mean that for it. all of us. Well, for all of us. We yeah. have to do well, the Well, you right know thing. where I work. Right. I work at the sharing community. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, and I work uh, 10 to 6. Mm -hmm. So I get, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I get, uh, you know, gang guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I get people that, you know, walk the streets at night. Sure. You know, and, you know, a lot of times they're looking for, they're looking for, more than just a place to sleep, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes they're just looking for somebody that they can like talk to. That's it. And People they just vent. want to talk. People but that's all right. Want to talk and they, they just do. want to be heard. They want to be heard. That's it. And especially mm -hmm. when people. You know, it, it's really rough when people don't have a place to live. Mm -hmm. You know, homeless. You know, a lot of people look at a homeless person and go, "Well, that's his own fault." You know, you got to be it careful. Be, especially in these day and ages. I was looking at some, with some people that were earning, a hundred, in California, earning 160000 and they need help from the government because it, it's just got so skyrocketed out of, of control. And it happens. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. and sometimes people lose jobs, and, 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 and one thing leads to another, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, and exactly. You know, you, you know six, health, eight months later, a year divorce, later, you find yourself. Yeah. All these things That's can right. contribute to any yes. of these kinds of situations that yep. you're talking about. Now we have one more picture of you, a black and white picture, <laughs> and so we'll see that now. <laughs> yeah, that was after the dreads, <laughs> and that makes you look old. You look like so old there. You I know, like that because it was black and white. Ooh. I actually like that because you, do? you know why? Because like my daughter, she was like, "Oh, daddy, now you look your age." <laughs> you <know what? laughs> now you look your age. <laughs> but you know, I like that because mm -hmm. sort of like a like a, a blues, you know, like mm. like I paid my dues and I'm <laughs> down in the delta somewhere, just like you know, like kicking off some mean blues with that Stratocaster. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Drew, before we forget, because we're sort of getting close to the end of the show, could you please share any details if they can contact you, if you could share your email address at this point? Uh, of course. I have two email addresses. Okay, lovely. Uh, they can get me at missyoudrew1 mm -hmm. okay. at yahoo.com. Wonderful. Or they can get me at missyoudrew at gmail.com. Fantastic. All right. Mm -hmm. Any th other information? Do you have any website? Are you on Facebook um, or anything We have like a that? Facebook. Um, the uh, My... Um, uh, keep the Change Band. We have a Keep the Change uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Go to it, mm -hmm. like it, support us. Excellent. You know, mm -hmm. um, Keep the Change is a very interesting group because you know it's a conscious, you know, 
um, all original, mm -hmm. you know, uh, everything is conscious. Okay. You know, it's message driven. Everything is conscious. Yes, message driven. It's our consciousness. Message. Everything is that. Yes, <laughs> and there's a message to That's it. That's right, very you know. good. Final Decision, mm -hmm. great band, mm -hmm. you know, great uh, R&B Top 40, mm -hmm. you know. Um, just a fantastic group of people, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it's not every day that you could play with two bands, right? And both bands have totally different uh, uh, genres, guess, yeah. uh, mindsets, but they are, <laughs> you know, if I had to choose between the both of them, I wouldn't be able to. That's fantastic. I'd have to clone myself. That's excellent. Or rip myself <laughs> or something. Mm. They, I mean, both bands are just fantastic guys. Mm -hmm. Both bands. I mean, just fantastic players, fantastic mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you know that's a hard thing in a band it situation. It is because there's many you know? bands have broken up because of um, because of the, the chemistry, the, oh, the, the the behaviors, the whatever. You it's know. the chemistry and yeah. the right. right but right, these right. two bands, the chemistry. I mm -hmm. I, I was blessed, mm -hmm. you know, to to find those two bands. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really blessed. Mm -hmm. So, um, winding up, mm -hmm. any last thought? What would you share with somebody who might want to get into this kind of industry? What would you share with them? What would you tell them? Well, I mean, I would very much tell them to learn all you can learn. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to be a musician, uh, you know, I, I would definitely be serious about, you know, learning your craft, learning your instrument, mm -hmm. you know, uh, learn how to read music, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm saying that not as a uh, as a prerequisite, mm -hmm. but it it helps. I mean, I know a lot of musicians that don't read music, and they're fantastic, right. and they can play anything, mm -hmm. any genre, right. and all they have to do is hear it, you know. But it it also helps to have a, a bit of uh, a formal. Uh, music training. Yeah, I can appreciate you know? that. Yes. And and the and for young kids, you know, uh, I would I would say uh, if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna if music is gonna be your choice, be very serious about it. Excellent. You know, very very serious. I tell a lot of young teenagers that are very good. Mm -hmm. I try to steer them away from them from certain trappings, drugs, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol. Very good. Very good. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to young boys, I, I, I really try to uh, put the message out, and this isn't just music, but put the message out uh, mm -hmm. uh, as far as, you know, um, um, being a gentleman, mm -hmm. you know, not um, uh, mm -hmm. not really thinking about, uh, you know, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, because, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's the lore, mm -hmm. you know, because it's really not that. Okay, Drew, so thank you. Thank you um, for having at this me. Time, um, I, I really want to appreciate you coming on the show. I and appreciate you I, giving I, me the opportunity. And I, I'm glad to that we reconnected. <laughs> I think it's great. I was so glad when I saw you. And so, to the viewers, your level of consciousness is the gateway to the future. Thank you. <laughs>